thank you for the yeah. Thank you for inviting me for closing remarks. It's a big honor, but it's certainly not a pleasure. <laughs> Everybody knows why. It's not because we are tired of all these discussions. Perhaps we have just had too much food of thought over the last two days, and we would now like to digest on our own, rather than have somebody who tries to do the digestion for us. Uh, so I will be very brief. I, I would just like to put forward a, a few observations which I have made during the course of these two days. Recurrent motives, perhaps, recurrent thoughts or thoughts that go uh, across uh, lines which we are normally used to, use, uh, to apply. Uh, starting where well, actually I wanted to start with an interesting and uh, joyful observation. Before I left Berlin for my travel to Bonn, I got a, an announcement uh, on the part of Area Studies Journal. Maybe some of us have received it. The announcement was very interesting indeed to the effect that it's a totally Europeanist journal. So at last, our Europeanist area studies colleagues have come to understand that they are area students. So I was very happy to learn this, because this is what many of us, among others myself, have been saying all the time. Europe is an area, and so are other areas, and they have come to understand this, or maybe parts have come to understand it. Uh, the only thing that was a little bit <laughs> less pleasant about the announcement was that guests are welcome. <laughs> so it's again <laughs> Europe and the rest. We can feel free to be guests in that prominent journal. Uh, maybe we can go for it. We, we could just pick up what we have and we could bombard them with our <laughs> knowledge and our experience in area studies. Uh, let us just occupy. That would have been my introductory remark from the beginning, uh, but of course there are uh, things that need to be told more urgently. So this was uh, collective brainstorming as I take it, and I benefited a lot from the introductory remarks of our dear colleague Jackson, because um, he, from the beginning, he drew our attention to the fact that there are um, disciplines, there are areas, uh, but none of these is a block in itself. The area could be divided up like a cake, and so could the disciplines, and the interface, the interface where these overlap or where they meet are the thematical subjects, perhaps. And uh, you gave us the impression that you are creating new, even new disciplines. I'm not that sure about this, uh, but it should be an open discussion, I think. So is, for example, migration studies, very prominent these days, is it a new discipline or is it just an interface of area centered studies and disciplinary studies as a uh, broad field. So we could say much the same thing about gender and sexuality studies, memory and remembrance studies, sustainability studies, cultural studies, justice and inequality studies, and so on and so forth. I think the catalog is long. And uh, you informed us about the wise decision at your university <laughs> to have analogous systems or structures. Uh, the question for us is, how, is it possible, can one organize universities or research institutions along these thematical interfaces? Would we benefit, would, would we be a better university if we introduced that new model? Or might we lose 
things which we have now, capabilities which we have now that are centered on in a disciplinary mode or in, in regional area uh, understandings that we might lose if we take uh, the new field as a, a basis for a restructuring, let alone the fact that the inertia, as you called it, at our universities or other institutions is endless. So perhaps we'd rather take these interfaces uh, as what we tried to do in Crossroads Asia as the analytical lenses or the paradigmatical lenses uh, which may then unite people who come from a more disciplinary centered uh, worldview and those who come from a more regionally centered worldview and we look into the topics together and we try uh, to be it permanently or for a limited period of time focus on subjects that unite us in our interests and produce critical theories of all these new, newly emerging research fields. I think we have to reconsider such matters. I, I have no solution to the question, but the question was very prominently present, I think. Uh, then, uh, one thing which I'm uneasy with is the understanding of area not because I believe in containers and non-containers, but it's an oversimplification. We have entities of reference, but as our presentations have clearly shown, none of them was about an area, or they were all using the word area, but in very, very different understandings. Areas have been this small and that large, right? So we are not talking about an area or areas, but we have meaningful entities which may stretch from one end of the world to the other, but they could shrink down to just half a kilometer. So the area as such deserves to be pluralized. It's not area studies, but I don't know what to call it, but we could bid farewell to the idea of areas and try to uh, find something better, more appropriate. Then there was, uh, to my surprise, or I, I, I really enjoyed many of the presentations that moved in with real or possible or perceived paradoxes. I liked the idea that material wealth capital does not translate or may not translate into authority or into status. It is not as convertible as we believed it to be. Or I like the idea that there is power without authority and there is authority without power. So all these seeming oppositions or I like the, uh, in one of the last presentations, I think it was Anna's, uh, this strange relation between formal discursive consent and actual mode of action. What is that again? So all of these cross-cutting or non-straight non modes of viewing our research subjects and topics um, can teach us that uh, simple and cheap polarities do not exist. Nobody believed there were any such, but it's an often heard reproach that we think in bipolarities. But our young scholars have taught us better. And this takes me to my actual real final remark. Thank you, all of our contributors, uh, for the last four years of cooperative research, because you have taken us to a point where we did not set out from, we could not have had this conference four years ago. If we had had, perhaps we would have gotten five millions or even more than that, but we were just capable of formulating some kind of an application. Today we would write much better applications, I'm sure. And this is what I have to 
thank all the contributors for. Uh, they have not been too prominent in this closing conference because we already uh, oriented towards the future. Uh, but we will have more opportunities to meet and we will have the possibility to wrap up even more of our findings. Still, I would like to say thank you to those primarily who contributed their personal research and who have really done a very good job. And thank you also to the invited guests who shared otherwise funded or non-funded research findings with us in order to even enhance us beyond what we could have reached with our own network. So the last word is as usual, thank you. <laughs>